developing business metrics that lead to the right decisions and governance. Smarter Solutions is glad to be hosting today's webinar with the ASQ Northern Michigan Section 1014. I would like to welcome you all, and again, thanks for taking the time to join us. I have a few logistical things to go over before we get started. This webinar will last about one hour, and um, we have muted all the participants, so we can't hear you, but we do encourage you to submit questions through the Q&A section of the GoToWebinar tool. So again, throughout the webinar and at the end, please feel free to send us your questions, and we will have them addressed by Forrest at the end of the webinar. We are recording today's webinar for future playback for anyone that attended or missed today's webinar. We are providing a copy of the slides to any participants that are live with us today in appreciation for your attendance. And um, so we will be sending you links to access this information in the next 24 to 48 hours. Again, thanks for joining us. And I will now introduce our presenter, Forrest Bryfogel. Forrest is a professional engineer, ASQ fellow, and serves on the board of advisors for the University of Texas Center for Performance Excellence. In 2004, he received the Crosby Medal for his book, Implementing Six Sigma, Second Edition. Forrest has authored or co-authored 13 books and published over 100 technical articles for well-known worldwide publications. He is the founder and CEO of Smarter Solutions, and recently published a four-book series on integrated enterprise excellence. Again, thank you for joining us, and I will now turn the presentation over to Forrest. I get hooked in here with this microphone. OK, I think we're in good shape here. OK, great. Well, it's uh, good to be here. And I thank the ASQ section of North Michigan for sponsoring this session. Um, I can't show, have a show of hands out there, but which I normally do. But I would like to um, have you do a little bit of a uh, search in yourself and ask your question. Do you feel really good with how businesses are run, you know, just in general? Now, how do you think about the uh, businesses uh, related to the financial crisis? Do you see some, we had some metrics that kind of drove wrong kind of behaviors? You know, I personally do. I'm really concerned about the lifestyle of my grandkids because uh, uh, we just have some real fundamental issues that I think need to get resolved. And that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today. Now, I, just some of the, the, the questions or the points that people uh, thought I should be addressing were really aligned to uh, what I'm going to be covering today. Uh, one of them was dealing with uh, reasonable business metrics and you know what to actually measure. How do you create that? You know, how do you develop uh, concise metrics? You know, another thing somebody brought up was how to find an organizational structure and sticking to it, because that's really important also how you tie into the metrics. Uh, driving cross-functional metrics so that you get uh, common business objectives and get away from the silo mentality. That's uh, really important, too. We're going to be talking about that also today. The other thing we're going to talk about is uh, how to reduce firefighting activities. You know, somebody asked for that. Well, we're going to uh, describe a system to, to address that sort of thing, too. And, and we want to get some meaningful met metrics that lead to the right kind of behaviors. So these are some of the uh, things that uh, people ask to be covered, and they uh, will be covered within uh, this overall session. Now, you know, we've uh, heard the word lean. Now, what does lean mean? Well, lean is reducing waste. Fair? Now, Six Sigma, what's often uh, thought about here is that we're going to be reducing the uh, defects or defectives that we have. Now, if you put them together, then we get a program that's to reduce waste and, and also the amount of defects. And typically, when we look at Lean Six Sigma, it's a methodology that's working on process improvement. But if we step back and think about it, we're really working on process improvement. But the question is, where do you improve? You know, and often to address that, we list the uh, uh, things that we might improve uh, kind of on a sheet of paper or in a brainstorming session. And then we prioritize those. But the problem with that is uh, we can end up 
reporting we saved $100 million, but nobody can find the money, but often because we get into a silo mentality. And, and I think it's got some fundamental issues in that also whenever there's a downsizing effort, who ends up uh, tending to go in and lose their job first? It's the people that are working in the process improvement efforts. Um, and you know, and so what's wrong with that picture? And the other thing is we um, start looking at how do we get projects. Well, somebody's going in and doing training, or they, they're getting trained next week, and we need to find them a project. So it becomes a hunt for project creation system. And often uh, what's really viewed out of it more is the certification of black belt or master black belt or green belt or whatever, as opposed to really helping the business as a whole. The point is it's not a business system. And uh, that's some of the issues that I think I, I have with it. I think it's great tools and things can be done with it, but we need to really focus on the efforts where the business as a whole benefits. Now, in order to do that, to me, I think we need to uh, revisit our, our business system. So, and that's dealing with the scorecard strategy building and process improvement efforts in general. And um, the system I'm suggesting is called the Integrated Enterprise Excellence. So I have to call it something, and that's what I'm calling it, or the IEEE system. And uh, so this is really using a business methodology that gets you out of the firefighting mode. Because we're actually going to be looking at metrics differently, so we don't react to all the ups and downs as though they're special causes, but we look at those as common cause variability, and then we lead to the right behavior that affects and improves the business as a whole. So if we step back philosophically, what we're really trying to do is lead to what I call the three R's of business. That is, everybody doing the right things and doing them right at the right time. Now, just if we start this, uh, elaborating on this more, uh, I think, again, our business management governance needs um, to be reinvented or at least be uh, uh, you know, enhanced. Um, now, if we look at the United States and, and elsewhere, uh, we really had um, a system that allowed for detrimental policies with minimal risks uh, for individuals if things did not go too well. You know, to me, it's somewhat of a sad state of uh, uh, events. While we may go in and talk about greed and things like that of uh, people in certain influential positions, but to me, we need to have a business system that kind of prevents that kind of activities. Now, if we start looking at how we've addressed these issues in the past, you know, at the turn of the century, we had Enron uh, had a lot of problems. So what do we do? We created Sarbanes-Oxley in the United States. And... And so that has been a very expensive um, um, endeavor for organizations to fulfill the obligations of Sarbanes-Oxley or SOX. And it did not really prevent the problems from occurring in the future here, or the problems that we've had right now. Now, one of the comments that I um, often give when I give these uh, presentations, either keynotes or uh, various uh, professional society is, Forrest, you really need to be talking to my ma manager's manager. And I won't really um, argue that point because I, I tend to uh, agree with it, but uh, what I'd like for you to do is uh, put yourself in the position of the CEO. All of a sudden you've got the CEO job of your company or a company that you're familiar with or maybe even heading up a nonprofit or even a high position in the government organization. And now you've got a lot of people under you, and you need to really go in and figure out how you're going to run this business. You know, you just got thrown into a brand new job for you. So the question is, how are you going to do that? And and most of us, when we get into a situation like that, we're we're building upon our past experiences and and you know what got us to where we're at right now. You know, and that's a fair thing to do. But the problem you got is it's often not a system. And if you put one person in that position, they might do one set of conditions or one set of activities, and somebody else could do something quite differently. Now, you may have success, you may not have a success. Um, you know, also in the United States, where uh, we have some problems, we go in and start hiring a new CEO. If we got problems, then they're going to fix world hunger in the organization. Uh, but in reality, we often have a system problem. And that's what I'm going to suggest to here. Now, not everybody thinks systems, but I'm suggesting that's the way we can you know, actually address some of the issues in the organization. 
And uh, that's what I'll be really basically be talking about today. Now, if we build an analogy of a golf course where we're na we want to navigate the sand traps and the other hazards on the organization or the golf course, and to kind of get to the, the green as fast as we can. And that's not really unlike what we want to do with this overall business system. And that's what I'm going to be talking about here today. Now, in government, you know, what is needed? Well, I suggest a lot of times we go in and try to fix our problems that we're having right now, trying to create expensive controls. And Sarbanes-Oxley was a prime example of that. But what we really want to do in the government is create policy that leads to healthy behaviors. And that's quite a different way of actually uh, taking on the overall uh, situation. Because the more I get into this, the more I talk about policies. And when you start looking at it, you've got a lot of policies, internal and external, that can drive through very unhealthy behaviors. And I think we've seen that in the, the financial crisis that we've uh, we're experiencing now. And hopefully we'll be recovering from it a little bit here. Now, in businesses, philosophically, we want to go in and have what I call the three R's of business. That is everybody doing the right things, doing them right at the right time. Now, in order to accomplish this, to me, we again have to have a system. Uh, just going in and relying on the brilliance of somebody at the, ho at the top to go in and orchestrate everybody, you know, to me, just doesn't work long lasting. And even if it is going great, what happens if they uh, win the lottery and they decide not to uh, work there any longer? You can have real fundamental problems. So in this government system, what we want to really do is revisit and actually uh, put together a system for integrating scorecards, strategic planning, business improvements, and control. So we basically put it all together. And these um, uh, objectives really apply whether you're dealing with governmental or you're dealing with um, uh, private uh, sector and nonprofits and whatever. So it's not unique to any one particular business. Now, if we look at all the different pieces that we have, it's not unlike a puzzle, you know, when we're putting all this together. So if we look at rule number one, we want to look at standardized processes and work. You know, that, I can't think that anybody probably agree, disagree with what I'm saying there that's uh, tuned in here. Rule number two is we want to have zero ambiguity so everybody really knows what they're fundamentally supposed to be doing. Kind of only makes sense. Now, rule number three is full with the process. You know, and this is dealing with transactional and manufacturing as well. Create a system so that people know what they're doing and they basically execute. And if it's not getting what you want, you look at revisiting the process. Only makes sense. The rule number four, which I think a lot of times is missing in some of the process improvement activity and also dealing with daily reporting, is speaking with data. And we want to also have good data. And we like to use data so that it's really independent of who's viewing the data. So it's, it's a, a kind of you come up with a common type answer. So I think that's something else we want to have in this overall system. And then the rule number five is develop leaders who are teachers. Okay, if you go to Lean Six Sigma conference, they say, well, leadership needs to buy into this. You know, well, you know, every conference you hear, that that's not actually happening. Now, what I'm suggesting is a system where now this is orchestrating it more than just doing projects for our leaders walking the talk of this overall system. Now, those first five pieces are often uh, uh, talked about in relative to Lean. And uh, I think that there are good comments uh, or good rules, but I've added some other rules. And rule number six is line work to the value chain. And I'm going to be talking later about what the value chain is. And that's not the same as a value stream map, which is a really important piece of, of lean. This is aligning to how we actually do business. And then number, rule number seven, which is part of the value chain, is how you actually look at and measure what you actually do. So we're not just suggesting that you look at variances to gold or what the quarterly numbers are on, so on. But what we want to do is have things at a high level, a 30,000 foot level, not unlike the, an airplane flying over. And we want to go in and get a very big, high level picture of what's really happening. And that's how we want to report it. And we want to also have it so it's long lasting. And that's part of this value chain piece. And I'm going to get into that a little bit later, too. Now, rule number eight is dealing with strategies after we're analyzing the overall system. So now we're going to look at data to give us insight to where we should focus our efforts. Obviously, we're going to look at the environment relative to our industry, 
Um, you know, are we getting saturated more commoditization and all those sorts of things? But we're going to look at putting together a system that's um, um, more structured. And a lot of these things are people are already doing when they're creating strategies, but I'm trying to create a process for putting this all together. And then rule number nine, let metric improvement needs pull for projects that are beneficial to business. Notice what I just used the word was pull. So we want to establish goals for these 30,000 foot level metrics, and we want to have an owner to that, and then we'd have it such that if we don't like what we see, we know we're going to have to improve. So before I get in any further here, what I'd like to do is, is ask a question that uh, select the boxes that most accurately describe the effectiveness of your organization's business measurement and improvement system. So uh, I appreciate you go in and uh, give us your feedback here or give us your thoughts where you're at. Okay, we got about 50%, okay. Forty percent is voted. Excuse me. Okay, let's give uh, five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, great. Okay, let's see what we got here. Okay, we got. It looks like it's almost a tie there. As needed, utilize total quality management and have no systematic improvement. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, and uh, oh, it's about less than 10%, about 5% or so, 6%, effective enterprise measurements. Well, congratulations. Um, uh, that uh, doesn't happen very often, so good, good to hear that. But that's what we're going to be trying to do is create a system for creating effective metrics. Well, thank you for your, your input on that. Okay, so now if we go in and start looking at systems, what we have here, typical measurements look at things fiscal year, and they're also unrelated to improvement systems. You know, we, we uh, go in and have point-to-point -point comparisons. You know, how did it compare to last month or how per compared to last year? Um, and again, these are not tied to financial, I mean, related improvement systems. But let's step back and think uh, maybe a better way of doing this, or at least what we ought to actually look at, is uh, this overall system when we need to have it so that everybody understands why is a function of x. That is the output of the process is a function of the inputs to that process and the process step itself. Now, everybody needs to understand it. it's not rocket science here. But if we don't like what we see to why, we've got to change either the inputs or the process step itself. Period. Okay, so we um, uh, just by going in and setting goals and tracking people's behavior to meet those goals. You know what that's called? It's called management by hope. You know, if you don't like what you see, the manager that owns that needs to be asking what is actually being done to improve that process. What roadmap are you following to actually improve your project uh, process? So that would be a project execution. Instead of going in and saying, you didn't meet the numbers this week or this month, and now you've got to figure out what happened this month. See, that's a very different kind of behaviors. So what we like to do relative to effective metrics, and I'm suggesting this throughout the organization, not just in manufacturing, we want to go in and view the enterprise as a system of processes. That's not the way we typically do it. We've got stack bar charts, pie charts, you know, and table of numbers. Those are not looking at it as a system of process. We then want to understand that view the metrics as a result of these processes. So in other words, just going in and managing to the metrics output doesn't do it. We need to manage to the inputs to make sure those are right and the process itself is right, the best it can be, then you're going to get the best response you can have. And if you don't like what you see, then you've got to go in and change it, change your process. And then now it's the steps of variability. If we go in and look at a table of numbers, stack bar charts, or whatever, we don't really have variability typically shown with that. So to me, that's a fundamental issue. And then we also understand supporting long-lasting change is a result of systematic improvements to the process. Everybody needs to get that in their heart. So what I'm suggesting is now we need to revisit our measurement system so that we're actually going in and uh, creating metrics that 
uh, leak or that, that have this effective metric component. Now, this is uh, some quotes taken from a book called The Real Numbers of Lean Accounting System. Now, these are from, uh, uh, this book is written by CFO type people, so it's not me, you know. Now, they go in and uh, have one quote in there. They talk about information must be easily understood and actionable. However, over the years, departments have learned to understand the departments not in terms of income and cost, but variance to goals that what? Have little relationship to reality. Well, my goodness, that's not right. doesn't make sense. Now, they also go on to say those same managers have learned to understand that they could may nudge things up and down to make a bad picture look better using this overall system. Well, that's not good either. You know, so in other words, you're playing games with the numbers. And you, know, you can kind of look around to you and see if that, that makes a, a difference. You can relate to it. Now, this other one is really a horror flip. They talk about a complex accounting fiction uh, system such that it's not unlike a funhouse mirror where a skinny man could look fat by simply shifting their position. That, they're talking about the county system now. Well, that's really not very good. I mean, who did that at the turn of the century? Yeah, Enron, right, and some other companies along the way too. So to me, those are some fundamental issues. We we don't want to go in and start, or start gaming them. And uh, there was even a, an article that came around uh, on the news media about rounding off. The, the fours don't appear very much. <laughs> you know, and that affects the overall stock, and it can affect the, uh, the bonuses and stuff like that or, or other uh, things. So to me, those are some fundamental issues. So typically, again, just to reiterate, the metrics do not view the enterprise as a system of process, and the metrics as a result of these processes. And we need to also understand and acknowledge the system of variability into those. And then we want to look at long-lasting change as a result of systematically improving these processes. So that's what we need to go in and get into our, uh, our belief system here. <clears throat> now, as I was alluding to, we need to, in my mind, to address these issues, we've got to revisit our overall business system. And the system I'm putting together and talking about is the Integrated Enterprise Excellence System. Now, the IEEE provides a business management governance system that's sustainable. Also, it creates a system or framework for healthy policy creation and deployment. What else it's got is something that's very different. It's got predictive measurements. So often when we look at just table of numbers, pie charts, stack bar charts, and other swarms of reporting like that, it's not like a driving, if we're going to use that to drive our business, it's not unlike driving a car only looking at the rearview mirror. These are just history. And, and that's not an indication of what might happen in the future. So what I'm suggesting is we want to look at history a little bit day, differently, but assess it relative to predictability. So now we're going to be staying and have metrics that's fundamentally looking out the windshield of the car. And if you don't like what you see, then you're going to either apply the brakes or or turn the steering wheel or whatever. In other words, you're doing a process improvement. So that's a very different and integral part of this overall IWE system. And then in addition, we don't want to look at scorecards by themselves because scorecards really don't do anything for you. They're kind of non-value add but necessary. You know, uh, and just going in and, and setting goals against them, you know, we know why function X does not make it happen. Okay, so what we really need to do is revisit our business system so that now we're looking at scorecards. We're going to integrate the creation of strategies, strategies written so you can get your arms around them, and then process improvement and control and put this basically all together. So the IWE system goes beyond Lean Six Sigma project-based system, you know, where you're looking at focusing on defect and waste reduction. Now, this overall IWC system is nine steps, basically. And it's applicable to the large and small companies, profit, nonprofit, government agency, and you know, basically any organization out there. And the philosophy of doing this, since it is, as you'll see, quite different, is I'm suggesting you start out small and you grow bigger over time. So it's not like you just say, hey, this is what we're going to do tomorrow, but now we're going to lead to this overall methodology. OK, we've got another question here. Your role here. So I'd prove, like to select one role that best describes you. Uh, 
Okay, a few of you voted. Okay, about half of you voted here. Okay, let's give it five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, let's look what we have here. Oh, okay, we got metric developer. Oh boy, they're going to really like this. I think people in that and ma manager of metrics. Okay, those are the two highest. Well, this that looks like a well, that's seventy percent there. So boy, you guys are going to hopefully get excited about that. Remember, you guys are running the company now, so you get to do anything you want to relative to this overall system. And and you know, I think that. Uh, uh, you'll end up liking it. Well, we'll we'll see what percentage of that is on the road. But again, if you if you like it, and then you say, well, this is this is maybe a big big pill to swallow. You know, let's touch base on it later, and then we can uh, see how we can do a little advocacy selling and see how you might move up the food chain if that's the case, if that's neat. Okay, as I mentioned, this is a nine-step business system, and I'm going to be talking about each one of these steps. Now, I want to highlight here before I get to the details of this is step one is looking at vision and mission. We're going to talk about that. Step two is creating a long-lasting system of what you do and how you're measuring it. Okay, and then we're going to have a feedback loop for improvement. And I'm going to get into all the details later. But notice what's key here is we don't loop back to step number one. If we're going to do improvement, it's going to affect what we actually do and how we measure ourselves. So it's going to have long-lasting nature to it. So it's not a function of what happened to the strategy for uh, the environment we're in now and whatever leadership we have. Okay. So now, if we go in and look at this overall system, and I'm going to be walking through it now. The first step, as I mentioned, is vision, mission, and values. You know, there's basically who kind of we are and what are we going to do, what sandbox are we going to play in. And it's going to have a clear direction for the company and help ensure that we're all working in the same direction. And we want to have make sure that everybody's agreeing that, hey, this is actually where we're working and that they're striving to do it. Now, notice we're not this does not change, you know, and I'm sure most of your organizations out there have already that being done, and I'm not suggesting that you actually change that. So that's long lasting. Now, if you look at step number two, I'm going to be talking about this more because this is a, a little bit different for how organizations put together uh, their overall system. So many people are talking about development of metrics and also um, management of metrics. So I think they're going to find this really uh, interesting or perhaps differently here. So but what we're going to do is now when we put together these metrics, we're not going to go in and start with the org chart. The org chart is going to be actually subordinate to this is what I call value chain, because that's what I'm going to be starting to build right now. So if we step back at a really high level uh, view of the organization, we develop product, market product, sell product, produce, uh, and deliver product, invoice, and collect payment. You know, a lot of the for-profit companies are out there are perhaps not much different than that right now, right? So this describes what you're doing at a very high level. So again, your organization charts become subordinate. So if you go in and reorganize, it doesn't matter. You're just changing up ownership fundamentally. And maybe the, some of the processes that you do internally. Now, if you've got a shaded box, that means it's got a drill down. Now, in reality, you would have all the boxes shaded, because this is, can become the repository for what you're actually doing. And I'll talk about that in a minute later. Now, we can also go in and add more things to it. So the front end, you want to get voice to the customer. So this is looking at taking inputs, not just metrics, but we're looking at inputs on how we go in and feel on what we actually should be changing the business. So I look at that as a process step itself. So these rectangle boxes are process steps. And notice the other thing on the right-hand side is report financials. And I'm suggesting we want to go in and look at the financials using the same sort of reporting scheme. So we're not bounding ourselves by calendar year. So if nothing has changed basically in 10 years, we've got 10 years of data to go in and make uh, statements on it. And we're going to get into that. Now, if we go in and start looking at our overall value chain, there's going to be some support organizations. You're going to have finance, legal, and so on. Okay? So these are separate entities. And that's not necessarily what the customer experience is. But those are something that we have to go through. It's kind of value, non-value add, but necessary. And 
Now, if we, as I mentioned, those shaded boxes are going to have drill downs to them. So this describes what you do. Because even if you've got change in leadership or strategy or whatever, you're fundamentally going to do the same sort of thing. So if you make or are involved in hospitals, you're not all of a sudden going to start building bridges. You know, so you've got a, a, a procedures for hospitals, and that's going to be long-lasting no matter who the leadership is. Now, yes, you can perhaps improve that, which you improve those metrics, and that's what you want to look at. But it's not dependent upon the strategy. So the metrics themselves are not dependent upon strategies.